Hello, everyone, and welcome into another episode of the Go 24-7 podcast. Recruiting heavy this week, and there's a big reason why. Obviously, the Tigers have picked up two big commitments in the past week, but this weekend has a potential to be another big weekend for recruiting for the Tigers. Sonny Ship alongside me. My name is Bryce Kuhn. And Sonny, we've got a big weekend, the Bayou Splash. It's going to be a lot of fun, some big names that you've been highlighting for over a week now. Talk to me kind of about your feelings coming this week. A lot of kids that are committed, but some big names that are uncommitted as well. What's the feeling you think from this staff and what they can accomplish heading into a pivotal weekend? Yeah, you know, coming out of – we just came out of a month-long bid period. Uh, it ended – Oh man, my days get so confused now. I think on the twenty, <laughs> I think the tw- the twenty fifth is when it ended, and uh, that gives college coaches about about six or seven days before another dead period comes into play. Basically, all of August during fall camp, and it really gives coaches just this one last push before the season starts of being able to get kids on campus. A lot of unofficial visits. You see schools from you know really schools from all over the country are hosting events this, you know, either Friday or Saturday. And so really create some competition for, uh, you know, where, where kids are going to go, who they're going to go see. And, uh, you know, kind of, uh, you can start to use some of that track, some of that movement maybe as some potential indicators of, uh, of where they're going to end up. But, um, you know, I think that, that with LSU, for instance, things are going to get cranked up on, on Friday and uh, they'll be able to have their event on Friday. So a lot of schools, Texas A&M, Texas, those two are having events on Saturday. Uh, a couple more in the SEC. I think Georgia's having theirs on Saturday and stuff too. So it's going to be a, uh, it, it'll be a nice little weekend for recruiting fans to, to track all the information and keep up with it. You mentioned the names Texas, Texas A&M, and that's kind of been a common opponent for a lot of the kids that are going to be making the trek down to Baton Rouge. Uh, you got guys like Colin Simmons, Wardell Mack, a, a guy that you know we we mentioned in a podcast this week. It's a loaded secondary. Does he fit into the picture on this roster or with this class? And then I want to get your thoughts on Cade Durham, which I talked with Glenn earlier this week, and we we said you know it's kind of rare to see a staff go all in on one running back. Now the caveat is, is there's three they really like in that 2025 class. Kind of get your thoughts on Durham and, and Wardell Mack and, and where do things stand heading into this weekend with those guys? Yeah, I don't think there's any question that Wardell Mack uh, fits into this class, has a spot in this class. You know, when you go back, even even though LSU picked up Kai Bates on Wednesday when he made his announcement, you know, you still have you still have a spot for a guy like Wardell Mack who is versatile, can play anywhere in the secondary. He can play safety, he can play corner, he can play nickel, uh, you know, really just fit in in a multitude of places. And um, so, yeah, he's definitely a guy that 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 they want to reel in. And, and I think, you know, just like with Kai Bates, uh, it it seemed that LSU came from behind to, to overtake Tennessee. And, you know, a month ago, a month ago, Texas was the, was the flavor for uh, the hot flavor for Wardell Mack. He had taken his mm-hmm. official visit there. He had been to LSU once over the summer for a seven on seven camp, but really hadn't, it really hadn't taken a visit, you know, really hadn't gotten to spend a lot of time with the coaches and things like that. So getting him in on Friday, I think will, I think will be big. Uh, you know, Dominic McKinley, he's a, the big five star defensive tackle out of Acadiana. He's another guy. He visited, a, he took four official visits uh, in the month of June and that hadn't, didn't pop up over at LSU, though. And so being able to, if you're able to get him in on Friday, like it looks like they're going to be able to do, you know, maybe you can kind of start to start to change some of that momentum that it, that it appeared that Texas, um, you know, had started to build in the month of June. But I think with Mac, I think things are starting to, to are starting to trend more towards LSU's way, definitely more than they had. And just just getting that face time, just being able to spend time with the coaches, spend time with the players, for the coaches to be able to spend time with his inner circle, I think you're going to see that pay some, uh, you know, pay pay some nice dividends as the uh, as the I guess the road to Wardell Mac's commitment as we continue down that path. Yeah, and then obviously going into Caden Durham. I mean, we mentioned 2025 is loaded. They're going to have Harlem Berry obviously on campus, a big piece to this puzzle. Uh, you know, it's not it's not far out to say that they say, hey, we like at least two of these guys, potentially three in 2025. Is it rare to see a, a staff go all in on a guy like Caden Durham? 
And if they don't get him, Sonny, kind of where do they pivot in your opinion? Is it we just don't take a running back and we look to the portal? Uh, where do they go with this? Yeah, I think so. I think that, you know, that that Frank Wilson has kind of put all of his eggs in, in Caden Durham's basket. And I do think LSU still leads for him. Steve Wilfong said the same thing. He still felt good about his crystal ball on Durham uh, to LSU. But if something happened and if he did go to OU or if he did go somewhere else, I think you would see LSU hit the portal. They would look hit the mm-hmm. portal for a potential, you know, an impact guy, a guy like Logan Diggs, someone who's got some experience, someone who can come in to kind of help bridge that gap to that loaded 2025 running back class. You know, you, you mentioned uh, you mentioned Harlem Berry. Of course, LSU's offered Harlem Berry. They've also offered James Simon out of Calvary Baptist. They've also offered Deshaun Ford out of Opelousas. Mm-hmm. You've got Jalen uh, Coleman out of Vanderbilt Catholic, uh, you know, who, who LSU has offered, who is a guy who could potentially play running back slot. Just He's just so fast. You just want to get the ball in his hands in any way possible. And, uh, you know, that's not even talking about some of the other run. you got Xavier Ford out of Leesville who just posted huge numbers last year who's going to be another guy that that's just going to, you know, he's going to create a lot of buzz, I think, as he, as he gets closer to his junior and senior season. And so it's really just such a loaded running back class in Louisiana in 2025. And we've seen Frank Wilson have these before. You know, you go back to mm-hmm. Leonard Fournette, David Ducre, Daryl Williams to that class. And when he gets his, when he gets a chance to have the, you know, to have that Louisiana class and to really be able to keep his stable inside the state, he he he, uh, he he enjoys those, and I think you'll see, and, and I, that's what I think you're going to see the focus shift to. If it's not Caden Durham, then you'll see Portal, and then you'll see Go Heavy on 2025. Yeah, that 2025 class is going to be a fun one to watch, and why I don't think it's too big of a, of a concern. Hey, when you look at the uh, offensive line in, in this 2024 class, obviously you feel like there's still some work to be done in that sense. I know uh, there's a certain player kind of maybe trending towards uh, you know the Tigers, but where do you think they go outside of this? Is this another situation where maybe they look to the portal? I mean, for 2024 specifically, how are you feeling about the chances with several offensive linemen? Well, Ori Williams, I, uh, you know, I put a crystal ball pick in on him. I, I think that LSU still leads for him. Wouldn't be, you know, I, I don't think it would be out of the realm of possibility that he does something this week, you know, this weekend mm-hmm. after after coming in for the splash. Um, you know, and, and then you start looking at some other guys. You've got a couple of guys inside the state. You've got Jude Foster and um, and uh, Joe Pryor, both committed to Ole Miss and who are both interior guys that the staff has really taken a good look at. And I wouldn't be surprised if one or both of those guys ended up uh, ended up earning offers. Of course, you also have Blake Ivey still out there, the big four, uh, mm-hmm. four-star interior offensive lineman out of Texas. I think you're still looking at an A&M LSU battle for him, but he's supposed to come in Friday, and this would be his this would be his first trip since he took his official in June, and so that that right there points to you know to some legitimate serious interest. Uh, it'd be interesting to see if he turns around and makes it over to A&M for their pool party on Saturday. Um, and then, you know, outside of him, you still have Weston Davis, the four-star offensive tackle out of Beaumont who committed to Texas A&M when, uh, when, when several folks, including myself, thought that LSU uh, would be the place that he would commit to if he committed, mm-hmm. you know, in that time frame. And so, and like the often, you know, we talk about senior evaluations. We talk about guys coming up and, and just seemingly coming up out of nowhere. I think the offensive line really gives you a, a, a situation like that because you've got guys who – who, you know, who have been big enough, who have been, you know, strong enough, but then they come in and their senior season, you know, they, they're able to kind of put everything together. And so mm-hmm. wouldn't be surprised if you saw some more guys pop up along that offensive line. I'm not sure if it'll be inside the state of Louisiana, but, uh, but I, I think regionally you'll see some, you'll see a couple of other guys pop up. Obviously, we talked about Harlem Berry going to be there. Uh, DeCorian Moore, number two receiver, a really talented kid. Uh, Ja'Cory Watson, another top 100 project. And then Javion Holiday, which is a guy who you talked about, is, has made a quite a rise for himself as well, part of that visit list that's going to be a really, really fun weekend to watch. Sonny, I wanted to get your thoughts on this. I got it on Glenn's earlier this week, but you look at what this team has done and this program has done inside the state of Louisiana here in 2024. 
a lot of people, including folks on our board, we enjoy the conversation or on social media, have a little bit of concern what they have not done outside. Now, obviously, Kai Bates getting him out of Florida was huge. Really, when you look for receivers and DBs, Florida is not a bad place to go and look for those guys. Is there a concern for you, or are you taking this more of locking down some inside the state of Louisiana talent and then branching out in 2025? What's the level of concern for you with this class? Well, the concern was last year when when you saw too many of the state's top players leave the state. You know, that's a red flag. That's a concern. That's something that you have to address. If you're going to be the head coach at LSU, you've got to keep the top players in state. Now, the staff did a fan, did a fantastic job of being able to to supplement those players that they lost with, you know, the number one player out of Minnesota, the, the number one player out of Maryland, the number one player out of several states. And so you have to be able to do that when you're not able to, I guess, uh, take care of your own business inside the state of Louisiana, inside your own state. And granted, you know, BK and his staff, they were put, they were behind the eight ball to begin with. So mm-hmm. you can't fault them for Tackett Curtis going to USC Arch Manning going to Texas, Derek Williams going to Texas. I mean, you know, there was just – there were some situations in there that where they were just had way too much ground to have to make up. But you saw them turn that around in this class, and you saw them address that with – you know, I think when you look at it right now, they've got eight of the top ten inside the state committed. You've got Kyrie Lee right outside that top ten who's also committed. And so – you know, they are doing what they need to do. They are doing mm-hmm. what they need to do. You look at the national championship teams, look at the Louisiana, look how many Louisiana players decorated those rosters. And Frank Wilson knows that. You know, Frank Wilson back in his old back in his old role as recruiting coordinator, Frank Wilson knows how to recruit Louisiana. He knows the approach. He knows the philosophy that you need to have in recruiting the state. So I'm not surprised at all to see a, a much more heavily focused inside Louisiana. And I think that was the plan all along last year was let's do what we got to do. Let's do what Mm -hmm. we got to do. Let's use the relationships that we have with other places and stuff. We know coming in, we know how things kind of fell apart on the back end of the Ed Orgeron uh, tenure as far as recruiting with recruiting and then contacting the younger guys and things like that. So let's do what we have to do to get everything on board this year and then next year we'll address it. And I think you saw them do that. So no, I'm not concerned at all that you see that heavy Louisiana presence. I'm not concerned at all about that. I think that is absolutely fantastic. And obviously, as we kind of wrap it up here, the crown jewel of that in-state class is Dominic McKinley. It's a guy that LSU has been tied to. Wanted to get your thoughts as we wrap up this recruiting pod ahead of a big weekend. Where do the Tigers sit with McKinley and kind of what is your feeling towards whether, hey, are they in the lead? Is this ground to make up? And, and you know, what's the timetable, do you feel like, for a guy like McKinley? Well, I think you're, you know, he, he, I think he, he's definitely a crown jewel. And then I think you put Colin Simmons in that next sentence. Mm-hmm. You know, you got the in state crown jewel, you got the out of state crown jewel. But, uh, you know, I think with McKinley, obviously, like I said earlier, you know, you got, you got to get him back in for the Bayou Splash. You don't want him to make a decision, uh, you know, before his senior season kicks off. And then you haven't gotten him back on campus since, you know, since May. That's just not a good recipe for for keeping the number one player in your own backyard. I do think that, uh, you know, TBD, TBD as far as where LSU stands, because if they get him on campus on Friday, then, you know, we may start to hear that, okay, the narrative starting to shift a little bit more, you know, not as much towards Texas or, or, or anyone else's way, but more more towards LSU's way, kind of like we've seen with Wardell Mack here of late. So that's what I'm anxious to see right there with, him, with, with McKinley. First, if he does show up, who he shows up with, I think it's crucial that they get, you know, that they get his mom on campus on Friday also. Um, and then you look at Colin Simmons, you know, that's a big one right there. You know, coming in Thursday night, he's uh, he's actually uh, middle of the week on Wednesday. He was actually uh, in uh, New York City on a little field trip with school. And so, uh, you know, well-traveled, well-traveled <laughs> young man. And I'm sure he'll do a lot more traveling over the over the years <laughs> before we uh, before he's done. But. You know, he's a he, he's a guy that the staff has just been in on from ever since they got down here. Uh, you talked about Sherman Wilson. 
earlier. Uh, I think he's a guy, you know, he's a guy that helped him get in Duncanville, has a great relationship with, with Colin Simmons, with Colin Simmons' mom. Colin's going to bring a bunch of family down here with him and stuff for this visit. His mom will be back with him again. And, um, you know, I, I think that getting him in at this time is, is really big, especially when, you know, he took his official visit to Texas and then, you know, you started to hear a little more of a, a little more of Texas buzz than you had been here. Mm. And I think that's continued over the, you know, over the uh, end of June and into this time in July. So you really, you want to get him on campus. You want to get his mom on campus. You want to get all those relatives on campus too. Again, to be able to, to, you know, to hopefully be able to bring back those feelings from when they were on campus before where, you know, all they talked about was home. All they talked about was the relationships that they had and things of that nature. So he's another one that is going to be interesting to see after this splash right here, what the, uh, you know, what the vibe is from talking to sources, from talking to folks in his camp, talking to folks on the Texas side, does Texas still seem to have a little momentum or has LSU been able to kind of retake some momentum? Yeah, it's going to be interesting. A lot of news and notes to come out of this weekend, and the best way to stay up to date with it is to head over to Go 24-7, get that VIP subscription, join the conversation. We can't wait for you to be a part of what we have going on. Sonny Ship and Bryce Kuhn here talking, recruiting a busy week, busy weekend as we get ramped up for fall camp. Sonny, it's about that time, man. For uh, for us to really get it locked and loaded, I think you and I are going to be going weekly here on some recruiting podcasts. So we'll have to catch up next week and kind of talk about what we thought, what we heard from a big weekend uh, here in Baton Rouge. Oh, definitely, definitely, definitely. Hey, football is right around the corner. Uh, we got fall camp right around the corner. Recruiting is about to pick up. But the best note of it all is my kids are going back to school. <laughs> <laughs> And yes, they are within earshot and probably could have heard Sonny say that, but that's going to be good news they will hear as more. well. <laughs> <laughs> this is the Go 24-7 Podcast. We appreciate you for watching. If you're on YouTube, hit that subscribe button, hit a like button on this video. It helps us in the algorithm. And as well, set up that notifications bell so you know when we post the brand new content. And if you're listening on Apple, Spotify, wherever you get your podcasts, we appreciate you. Follow, like, and subscribe to us on there as well. We'll catch you next time here on a great episode of the Go 24-7 Podcast.